Beijing is a city in China that's known for its old historical architecture and now its growing modernist look. Today we will be exploring an ancient temple and a library that's straight out of the future. But before we can do that, we have a major problem to face. Wait, what happened? It our, got canceled! Yeah, our train's canceled. What do you mean our train's canceled? This is what's going on right now. We bought train tickets to head to Beijing, and because of Chinese New Year's, the whole trip was canceled on us. So now we are stuck in Harbin, the coldest city in China, and we need to figure out how to get out of here. As of now, we are not off to a good start, but we decided to head to the train station and see if we could figure something out. I've never had this happen. This is like one of those things on like snow days where you miss your flight and you're stuck here. I've never had that happen to me, and I've been traveling for 10 years. The first ticket that they have to Beijing isn't until the 18th, which is three, four days from now. It's a 17 hour train ticket. 17 Complete hours? standing, no what? seats. A standing seat. for 17, is this a joke? <laughs> See, that's the thing about China, man. Like, we, this would not flow in the US, but, I mean, it's no one's fault though. She's writing something down, a number to, for us to complain and die. Oh yeah, so guys, just so you all know while this is happening, um, my passport is in their system, so I'm, I'm technically everywhere. They know where I am at all points and all times. Yeah. There's no direct flight left. So we're stuck. Oh, Literally, st I've never oh, had this stuck. This is crazy, y'all. This is not good. This is not good. This is not, not good. good. <laughs> we were approached by some random guy who said he had a bus, and we decided we had no other options, so we followed him. All right, so we're gonna follow him? Uh, yeah. All right, let's, let's go see. Let's go see what the bus is gonna happen. I mean, worst case is I lose one kidney and I'm still alive. <laughs> Dude, no joke. Other the guy found more people to join, and now we're all marching together. So even if it was unsafe, there's too much people for him to kill or scam. Our bags were being strapped to a taxi just hanging out. The bus was behind us, and we got into the taxi to board the bus in another location. So 14 hours in this. Holy. <laughs> Yeah. The longer we sat on the bus, we started to see how bad it was on here. The whole thing is scraped up, smells bad, overcrowded, and the bathrooms at rest stops were littered with trash and ramen cups. We've been on the bus for over 20 hours already and some little kid threw up all over my bag. All right, so the kid just threw up on my bag. We're, we're doing it good here. I'm not gonna show the kid, obviously, but that's throw up on my bag. We're doing good, we're doing good. I'm loving the bus. The bus journey finally ended after 24 hours, just sitting there marinating. I was defeated. I'm getting out of here. I'm safe. It's time to retire. Oh my god. Jeez. What even happened? We are going to go explore around Beijing. Let's see some temples. Let's do some things. I'm burnt out, but I definitely want to have a good time. It's all part of the fun and the, the adventure. Stay positive. Let's get it. It's the weirdest thing ever. My wallet stays here. We don't need it. Passport? has to come with you. It's the complete opposite from what every other country would do. You would never think. You would think to kind of leave your passport at home or whatever, unless you take your passport with you. I usually don't. I just forgot my card key inside the hotel. I'm pissed. I heard Josh say, oh my God, from my room. And I immediately knew what happened. <laughs> Dude, you know the funniest thing? Is this happened already yesterday <laughs> off camera. It is just us two. Rich is with his aunt because, you know, he has family around here. So he's chilling. You know, he's in his hometown area. So we're going to get ready. The idea of today is to show you guys a very basic, broad, but our version of Beijing. As soon as we left the hotel, all we got to do is go straight down this road and end up at the Forbidden City. Again, what I like about China is that everything is so wide and open, but there are cameras everywhere. For example, uh, every street sign or like even on street signs, but every uh, post has so much cameras and detections. So you cannot be hidden. But look how wide everything is. This is all of China. Everything is super wide and big, which is great because in other countries, say Europe, everything is super small and the roads are small. But here, that is not possible. Everything's wide, which is amazing. One thing I notice about like cars or in general, all of China is a lot of them have weird sayings. Build your dreams. Would you buy a car in America that says build your dreams? Absolutely not. No one would. But here in China, in, in general, like some other countries, they have a lot of U.S. words on the clothes, 
billboards that are just cringy and stuff we wouldn't really generally say or put on stuff like that. So down here is what I thought was the Forbidden City, but it's not. It's actually called the Temple of Heaven. So I'm way off on my maps and everything. I, I'm being honest, this is a straight on real vlog and I generally thought we're going to the Forbidden Temple. I'm at a place called Temple of Heaven. Let's figure this out together. Uh, well, we're at the ticket booth. I sh I'm sure they speak English here. I don't know, bro. This is hard. Let's just see what happens. I'll record you and you do it. Well, funny enough, the Temple of Heaven, I actually been wanting to go to. If you go to Epcot at Disney World, this temple is there. And, I, and back in the day when I was 16 years old, I did a handstand uh, over there. So I actually never seen this in person. This is actually cool for me. Steve Ronan was able to figure out how to get us tickets. And just like everywhere else in China, we use the digital app on our phone called Alipay to purchase our tickets. All right, guys, we are inside. Now, this place we're going to, obviously, Temple of Heaven, it was it was used to be worshipped by the Ming and Xing dynasties. Oh, let's do it. I'm vlogging, they want to take a photo of me, probably because I'm white, but I'm down. Let's go, baby. I, I just, I'll never get over that. Yeah, I'll never get away. over that. It's amazing. Not because I'm a YouTuber or they know me, it's just because I'm white. Already that was a solid five minute walk from the entrance to get the ticket to here. And we are still not even close because we're still walking another distance. All right, we have made it to the platform where the two temples are or some two big buildings are, the ones that everyone are here to see. We have one on this side, and then we got the bigger one on this side, but just look at how wide and how big everything is in general, even back in the day. The old ancient steps, safety hazard, and we, they still kept it, which is cool for everyone crossing. But we're about to go through and see this. Again, I want to remind everyone, this structure back here, I've been wanting to see for so long. And again, with Steve, we took breakdance photos when we were super young, like 19, here in front of this, back in the day at Disney Epcot. All right, now watch when we get inside and see this. Holy shit, this is crazy in person. Oh my God. There's a lot of people here for being Sunday, but this is the last day. Well, yesterday was the last day of Chinese New Year. This will be empty tomorrow. Right, we are now going inside this bad boy. Don't know what it looks like. Never seen a photo, actually. I've only ever seen an outside shot. Maybe we can't go inside. Whew. Big old stairs are going up right now. Everyone is huddled up here. What are they looking at? I want to know what they're looking at, too. I can't even see. What do we see? Oh, no. Honestly, not much. You know, it's still built amazingly. Either way, you have to appreciate it. I will say that this, this is like a phoenix or some sort of like dragon. Uh, right there on that. But that's really it. Yeah, just some dragons. So behind that temple is this thing. We don't know what's in it. We're gonna go check it out. But there's a model. Oh my god, I get it. This is the ancient original one. Look at that. You could even see the dragon. Look at his eyes are kind of fading out now. This one. So if you go down a stairway, you can see like this is like supposed to be like in the clouds. Like it's starting as you go higher into the sky. As you go up up higher and then you meet the dragons when you're higher up in the sky over there. It's really cool. Rich is back. He just joined us. Yeah. What's Welcome what's back. Hey y'all. So what do you know about this place, Rich? So what I know is only what like I learned from my aunt and like from my family, like just about the place in general. But this is actually where the emperor used to pray to heaven. Like back in the old days, the emperor is like, like more important than a king in England or, you know, like in Europe. So much so that Whenever you see three doors walking in, the the center door is reserved just for the emperor. Oh sh! The doors you see are for everybody else. You can't walk through the center door. Also, the center path is also reserved just for the emperor. The center path that you saw walking all yeah. the way up here, just for the emperor. The emperor never bows to anyone except when he comes to this very place to pray and bow to heaven, essentially. The sky is their god, is the Chinese god. And you can see that reflected in the temple because the blue on the temple represents the sky, actually. And the circular shape of the temple actually represents the shape of the sky. Because they thought, you know, the earth was flat back then. Yeah. They were all flat earthers and whatnot. So, we're yeah. still flat earthers. We're gonna head straight from here right now to the, we're calling it the black market, AKA the silk market, where you can get anything fake you want. Yes, made in China, baby. Oh, 
check out my new clothes in the link in description down below. So guys, a lot of people always kind of talk junk about Chinese remedies or Chinese, you know, herbal teas and medicines that's supposed to cure you. And I get that. I get a lot of the reason why people do talk junk like that. But they gave me one today, uh, and I'm trying it because I do have a cold. Oh, I can't just chug it? Uh, well, you can try. Well, you mean try. Are you sure, bro? I feel like this is like a blood donation tab or... So I just drink it? You don't feel bad at all. Yeah, it's an interesting taste. What the f Yo, I'm ready to try it too. Sure, sure. Okay. It's so good, like your throat's supposed to feel like minty. But no, it already does. It's yeah. a, like a hard mint menthol yeah. in, my in my mouth right now. Well, that smells nice. Thank you, thank you. You want to try one? Yeah, give me that. All right, yo, take the, it's, the, it's the tea virus. The tea virus. Should I take that too now? She says yeah. Yeah, I'm just taking everything. All right, I'll take it. All right, Josh, drink up. Oh my God! All right, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> that looks like syrup, bro. Like thick gravy. Oh. Woo. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Not bad. I'm not that sick. <laughs> Dang, as if it's bad. We don't know yet. Let's see how I feel. I'll check in on you. I'll check in on you guys how I feel when we get to the black market. My aunt says she hasn't been here in like 20 years. Wow. And that no Beijing local ever comes here. <laughs> All right, guys. A lot of people come here. They like to just bargain for no reason and hassle around people, but you can get anything. You can Google how to get here just by typing in the silk market in general, but we're coming up to it now. A Chinese Starbucks really quick. I have to show you what one looks like. I know you guys at home are going to want to know, but look at this right off the bat. A coca uh, chocolate raspberry flavored mocha, and that's a macaroon one. We have to try this flavor. What is different? Oh, dude. Look at how, I know you guys like this. A lot of you guys like to collect the cups, the mugs. This is a lot different. Look at, whoa, the holy grail. The holy grail. Dude, I don't know, I might need to buy one of these. Uh, can I get? I'll show you, I'll show you, come, come over here. All right, I gotta show her. All right. This one, this one. Oh, that one. Oh, sorry. That flavor. They don't have any. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, they don't have any, so I gotta try something different. That's okay. Okay, I'll get the the golden caramel. Dang it, they don't have any more. It's not Valentine's Day anymore. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, the other one, the rose flat white. You like it? So that one. Good, okay, okay, I'll get, I'll get that, I'll get that. We'll get that one instead. Check out the Dragon Steel mug in China. Only in China you're gonna get these. Makes me wanna buy all of them for no reason. Guys, I love this place. All right, let's try it though, let's try it. Ready? You all you wanna try? Yeah. I do wanna try it. Oh, wow. And it's a rose theme, like a Valentine's February vibe. Rose flat white. Really, right? It's nice. Yeah. It's real good. Hot. Oh yeah, you took a big ass sip, boy. So guys, inside the mall is where the Silk Road is. This, you know, the the this place. It's all different stalls. But to get here, you have to go through the mall first. The things have changed a lot. Yes, this is all fe technically fake, but it's just not the same anymore. It almost looks like a real mall with real things. Now, guys, remember everything here is all fake, all made in China, and it's not real. But it's fun to go through and just kind of explore it and see what they got. All right, so I'll just go around and show you. These are some of the shops they have here. And yeah, there are deals on things here. But remember, everything here is just knickknacks or fake. We'll kind of go around and see what they have here, which is really cool, though. You can get suits here that are cheap. They still look good. Actually, dude, you can tell. Look at the difference just on the stitching. It's so different. Huh? You get a pair of uh, Actually, no, <laughs> that's kind of fresh. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of fresh. I just feel like they're gonna break as soon as we put them on. Quality. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how much? This kind of, this kind of give you 250. 250? 250. Chinese. Would you, what is chi in the Chinese? It's like 30 bucks. 30 bucks, holy <laughs> That's so good compared to, <laughs> 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 obviously I gotta remind myself. 200 though. Which one you want? 
Maybe that one for 200? You sure what you want? 214. Well, that's not much difference. So for 200 though. Yes, I give a real price, not give any starting price. Because New Year, you know, very quite a business. We don't need to do like 400, 500, we get a harder bargain. Just All right. Yes. How about this? I'll look around yeah. and I'll come back and maybe we'll get it for 240. Yeah, no need to look around, just buy right now. Mm, I would say 200, that's why. I'm a snowboarder, so to see those for even 30 or $20, though they're fake, it's tempting to buy them because they really are 300 at home. Oh, you're my first customer. Oh, first, yo, oh, there you go. Oh, oh my ring. she has everything. My earrings, okay. your rings. No, it's not bad. Dude, no, it's not bad. Get it, get it, get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Should buy it. Oh, get one. A lot of these look kind of better than this actually, one. Actually, <laughs> it actually does. Yeah, I got in Hong Kong. You know what? You, know what? Yeah. you are my first customer. First customer. So, okay, so first customer is a good Luka, discount. Luka, 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 Luka. 300. 300. Yeah, yeah. I, I give. Okay. Now you, she dropped it to 280. 280. That's okay. okay. I'm your first customer though. Yeah. First, yeah. that's like a 200 dollar. 200. 200. You give me 200 dollar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 200 US. Yeah. <laughs> What's it in Chinese? Yuan. Yuan. 200 yen for sure. Yeah, you're, you're bartending or whatever. 260. Like, for me, Josh, huh? 260. It, it, it's starting. It's starting to make me happy. I'm almost happy. Almost. Okay. Wait, but we can we can get the 220 for sure. Okay, come on. Okay, 240. Come on. 240. Oh, oh, yeah, 240. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm feeling a little happy. Mm. <laughs> okay. So okay, so we can hit 220 now. Two, 220. Mm. Okay, okay, deal. Done. Mm. See? All right. Okay, okay. You I want to be winner. nice too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know. Winner. Yeah, winner, winner. <laughs> I'm Summer. This is Summer. She's really nice. Honestly, I'm gonna buy this. Our drink. favorite. A lot of people that don't know how to barter or, or never been to even a third world country like Thailand or anything, dude, you come here as as like say American, UK, whatever, Canada, and you don't know anything. You're just here and you're just like, oh, this is cool. I'll buy it. You don't know that you can just literally significantly lower. Both my aunt and my uncle are like that. Ring's not worth more than 120. I know. And they, that they wouldn't buy it even for 50. Look at that LCD screen. You can play Chinese or English. Yeah, Chinese, English. Look at this right? Project X. I'm curious, I had to ask her to turn this on. The Project X. So look at this. It's like the new PS uh, handheld PlayStation, and this is called Project X here in China. Well, let it load up, bro. It's made in China, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we managed to get Tekken to work on the Project X. This is a PlayStation One game. A little slow, but it it, it does the job. I think those are. Knock up iPhones, guys. They're sick, though. So, Explorers, what we're talking about is like, because this one back at home is $1,300 after taxes. But this How one, this? we're trying to see what we can get. Here we go with the prices. Now, generally, again, 1.3K at home. Not not as strong, not as real, but let's get a real price. Buy it now. <laughs> <laughs> we're causing a huge commotion. We're causing a huge commotion right now. But here's what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is, is like, yes, it's fake. That thing costs literally one thousand three hundred at home. But at home, if I spent two hundred dollars on the suitcase, that suitcase outperforms way better than my two hundred dollars suitcase I would buy at home. Hey, what's the new price? What's the new price? What is it? What is it? One eighty US. I. That's a deal. That's a deal. It's a. That's a deal. Uh, I like it. 180. We're getting out of here. We're causing too much commotion. Bargaining and doing all this. Let's get out of here. We have way more to do. Guys, in the end, we made it out with one thing from there. And that is Steve's ring. So, explorers, I cannot pronounce this, but uh, Rich's mom decided to take us here. And it's one of the oldest markets, uh, little buildings in all of China. But now I can show you the bus route on where we are right here. So if you type something like this in, it might be able to get you here. So we're gonna go inside and pick up things to eat and just try little things. Donuts, almost. This is new, I've never seen this or this in China, so, and she's still ordering more. And, and Rich, you're Chinese and you said you never had some. I honestly haven't seen most of these Because they're not in Chinatown in the US. Yeah, they're so this not, is yeah, this really is, traditional. This is very traditional Beijing too, yeah. So this soup right here, uh -huh. it's apparently very sour and like has some weird interesting taste to it okay and my aunt actually doesn't like it wow like, beijing local people drink it a lot and you're supposed to what break that up yeah so we, i guess we let's try it thirds. All right. all right and we dip right. it in just dip it in and eat bottoms it up bottoms up guys 
Ready? Why does it taste like McDonald's chicken nuggets? Are you getting that? I'm not. The skin of the chicken nugget. Yeah, the skin of the chicken nugget. This is what it tastes like. The McDonald's chicken nugget. Hands down. Actually, it does. I'll try this too. I'm taking a bite. Mm. I've had this hot flavor. It's a sesame cracker. How about that? So this is like a mochi already. Soft, gooey. Definitely bean paste in the middle. I'm not a huge fan of this. I already know I'm not going to like it. It's like a red bean, very oily, soft thing, yeah. This, don't know what it's called, almost like a munchkin. Dip it in some sugar, you know, and eat it almost like a fried dough from like a carnival. Cheers. I want cheers, cheers. Oh my God, mm. just pure chicken, amazing, I love it. What is that? It looks like mashed potatoes and gravy. It's noodles and tea. That's Mixed in? Wait, what's, what's the noodle? Ask what's the name of it. Like, like it's a noodle. Mian Sa. Mian Sa. which literally translates to Mian noodle tea. All right, boys, slurp in. Let's see it. It's like you're at the, the you're going to school and they slop it in your tray. The craziest, weirdest taste of my life. But it's not bad, but it's very mushy. Honestly, if I had to ballpark it, I'd say $15 for all this, if I had to guess. What is this, Rich? It's a, a tofu soup. A tofu soup. Looks like an like an, an alien dish, like aliens would eat this. Mm. Wow. This is a dessert. All full of sugar and gummies and tastes like strawberries. This is a good dessert. Now what is that on top? Prunes or cherries? Let's just go down on it. Let's see what this is. I'm gonna be straight up with you guys. It's like there's nothing in my mouth. It's like air. And what I'm eating here is a is a peep is like a pie, almost like a French meat pie. But this is their their version. And this is my favorite thing out of all of this. The funny thing is, is that if we took a foreigner. Like anyone, I'm a foreigner, but if we took someone that's not from China here, like, hey, here's our food, a lot of people would be upset because it's very old fashioned and different and it's not the best, but it's like good because it's traditional. The store in particular yeah. is extremely famous and still alive and popping despite, you know, us thinking the food is mediocre. That. It's actually a good crowd yeah. of people here. Because this is actually like the previous president's and emperor's favorite restaurant. Ask her what the name of this is called. Hu Guo Shi. Hu Guo Shi. Hu Got it. Interesting food. Some of the most interesting food I might have ever had. Thank you. And I gotta respect the Chinese hospitality. Everyone here in China is actually nice. And it's not what you actually see on the news. Our next stop on the list is a library that's super futuristic. And it's a library you've never seen before. Oh yeah, and Rich's aunt really wanted to show me this robot arm coffee machine. Look at this. Oh, dude, he's even pouring it. That's nuts. Okay. Oh, he's shaking it. He's shaking it. Yo, that's fresh. Oh, no way. No way. He like knows the patterns. All right, and we have our first robot made coffee. I mean, this is what I expect here in China for sure. Like taking it to the next level. Mm. I mean, the quality is amazing. That's for sure. Ooh. So you can you can get more shapes then. So you can't get your face. You really did get the swan, but you, you kind of moved around a little bit, but it still looks good. Yo, boys, what is going on? Check this out. Rich says that here they call this the metaverse. Um, so, oh, yo, <laughs> dude, what is that? Oh my god! 
This is insane. This is a library, guys. Hello? Dude, what the f This is amazing. It really takes you out of reality. So enough of that at the moment, but just look around us at all this as well. This is a pretty high-end LCD panel screen. I don't know if these are supposed to be like actual people walking around. Are they like detecting us? I, I just don't know what this is at all, but it is really freaking amazing. But as you come up in here, holy, this is massive. Bro, what? What the hell? This is like an insane place. I've never seen anything like this. And if you look over here, you notice that these are actually a screen. What is this? It's a sculpture of a mountain in China. This thing? Looks like chocolate. If the climb up is actually really tiring. But I'm up here, and look at how everything looks. Then over here, people are just playing games, watching stuff, and look. It's almost like a massive classroom. Anything that's like a super big book, a hardcover, they put it in a separate container because they have so much space here and it's so big, they're able to literally just put one book in a separate way to give that aesthetic vibe of, I don't know, modernism. It's so freaking cool. And just as I walk through this crazy village of books in this futurism place, it just generally gets better. Different areas of books. This is a work pod and apparently it's soundproof, but I don't really know how soundproof it is. Let's check. Yep. I can barely hear you too. It's definitely muffled. It keeps you kind of in a more like, okay, you have to study kind of thing. And it's heavy in here and you could hear your ears ringing. So they definitely soundproof it in some kind of way though. What's really cool is that if you go down these stairs, each section has a different like iPad. They can look up different books. Each side has it. So we found this like children's area these even move like it feels like the winds on them see look at they're moving it's time for bed it looks like the men in black secret base again this is called the beijing library but whatever the name i said earlier that i no longer can pronounce was the chinese name but top tier beijing library <laughs> <laughs> you just got them staring dead and dying. That's the Beijing Library, guys. Check it out, check it out. And it's super epic. Again, with the words up there, reminds me of like a whole cyberpunk netrunner thing, if you know what I'm talking about. Epic, epic, epic. Now, to end this final thing, I got some bonus footage. We are heading to a uh, uh, Chinese New Year, the last thing ever, the last day ever, and you get to go through it and do some carnival games. I gotta watch out for you guys, cause I might bang into you. Yeah, so welcome to China, guys. This is pretty sick. Watch this, ready? Whoa! Whoa! It takes two hands to control this. I can go in circles, really cool. And mind you, in China, these are everywhere in any park. You can ride these. So it's not just Beijing, but it's actually everywhere. Chilling with my boys. This ain't bad. All right, so right now we are playing a game where you're gonna hit the golden egg on the slingshot and hit these uh, stuffed animals down. So we'll see how this can go. Oh, this is really hard. Oh, nice. Wow. All right, so we got one thing, boys. We got this little. Panda. We can cut that in threes. Right? Yeah, yeah, we can yeah, each yeah, keep yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> to end the carnival games, we're doing the biggest and the baddest. We got the op here. If you play video games, Call of Duty, Counter Strike, you know what I'm talking about. Check this out right here. Our goal is to get the targets done. Uh, I don't know what, what our ammo is yet. We're going to figure it out. I think it's one at a time, maybe. Ready? Or maybe you load it up. Yeah. Oh! Yo! All right, one, two, go.
All right, what's gonna happen? Wow, this is very close. One more, who's gonna win? One more, who's gonna win? Oh! Eat it! Eat it! Damn, Steve so much more practice. And Steve didn't even win on the last game. He didn't win on the last game. Not even up, dude. This is oh no, no, that's done. All right, all right, all right. Here's what's going down. We are back from a long Beijing day. Um, I mean, what the hell? The bus ride here, the crazy futuristic uh, library, the old school foods, the carnival, um, whatever else I did. I don't even remember what happened anymore. Oh, the, the temple. So much in one video, so much in an action-packed kind of like two days. I love it. I love China so much, more than I ever thought I would. When I first thought about coming to China, I was like so nervous, like, am I going to get in trouble? Is the news... Is, is people watching me? Is, is this going to be an issue? Is, am I able to film? Am I going to go to jail for no reason? Like, all this came up in my head, especially because of the war and what's going on. It's like, but when you're here, none of that matters. No one cares. I, I learned this from even uh, in Mexico, when I read the news about Mexico and U.S. It's like, don't go here or don't do that. Of course, you've got to be smart. Don't go outside at night or, you know, midnight or something asking for trouble. Don't do this, don't do that. Be smart. But generally, it is a beautiful place. Everyone here is so nice to you. They just want to have a good time and they're surprised when they see like a white person out here or this, a foreigner, they treat you good. They want you to see China for what it is. It's been an amazing time here. The food is so good. The people are good. The locations are good. And it's only going to keep getting better. Uh, what we have planned next is a Great Wall of China, but the abandoned side, like some unique stuff. We have a few abandoned places left. China is very hard to travel to. And without Rich or some friends, I could not do this alone. And even after uh, a month or even two, three weeks here, I still don't feel comfortable enough to travel alone. It is very hard for me to do this here. I can go anywhere else in any country and I can be fine by myself. And I'm a 10 year travel veteran, but I have issues getting around where I'm not comfortable enough yet. Maybe I will soon because I'm not going to lie, I have an entire huge list of China that I want to just do and film and show you guys. But it's going to require about another three months here. So, but next year or the year after, I will complete China the way I want to, like I did with other countries like Japan, Hong Kong, and some other ones. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I am wearing my merch. I have a bunch of merch. If you want to support my travels, they cost a lot of money to come out here. Um, buy the merch or just watch this, like and subscribe, or I have a Patreon. If you subscribe to my Patreon, I also can talk to you on it personally, and I have a Discord connected to it where I talk to everyone. I have the app on and I hang out with everyone. That is also in the link in the description down below. Thank you guys so much, and a huge shout out to Rich. His uh, uh, YouTube is also down below. He helped us a lot here. Show him some love. Um, rise above. Just get out to explore. Peace and thanks for watching. Join us on our next week's video where we will be exploring a mega-sized abandoned theme park in China.